Hey, my name is Andrew, and welcome to another episode of Forkless Cafe. This is Hedera Hashgraph's live stream where you go for your weekly DLT insights. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with a really quick uh, reminder of the disclaimer and uh, a review of our agenda here. Our objective is to share interesting news and, and industry highlights in the Hashgraph ecosystem. We're going to start things off with a guest intro. Uh, we'll move over to the industry insights, Hedera highlights, social scissors, and as always, our favorite part of the live stream is the hero of the week, where we get to single out a community member who goes above and beyond and uh, show our recognition for that individual. So um, starting things off, I want to remind everybody that we got Sharon here on the line, who's going to be managing the live chat. If you have comments or questions about some of the content that we're discussing today or want to ask Roland, our guest this week, a, a question, please chime in and then uh, Sharon will pass that along to us. So Sharon, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Awesome. And so today we are very, very lucky to be joined by Roland, who uh, actually recently participated in a, one of our podcast episodes with Paul Madsen on the Gossip About Gossip podcast. Uh, I, I highly recommend people to check out that podcast. You'll find technical, mainly technical content over there, but it's certainly um, framed for the average person to understand as well. But uh, Roland, would love for you to uh, introduce yourself to the community for those that aren't familiar with you. And uh, perhaps we can have a quick uh, back and forth here before we dive into the content today. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew and Sharon. It's uh, it's awesome and really a, a huge pleasure and, and, and great to be to be on the show. Um, yeah, I'm, where do you join I'm us a, to from today? Where are you from? Yeah, today? Just wanted to say I'm I'm from Switzerland. Uh, this is this small little country in the heart of Europe for the ones that don't know. So it has nothing to do with Sweden. It's really the small one, the Switzerland one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm a, an independent digital architect and uh, really in, in the process to, to create several projects, several companies that heavily rely on, on, on the hash graph. And therefore, it's awesome to be, to be again a guest. And, yeah. Uh, Actually, I, I would I would love to ask you a couple quick questions, Roland. Mm -hmm. I uh, when I listened to the podcast that you did with Paul, uh, you actually you actually uh, uh, highlighted the point that there was a time when you called yourself a disbeliever of DLT. You were a disbeliever. You didn't see you didn't see how this is going to make an impact on society or the, the marketplaces. Uh, I'm curious if you'd like to touch on that somewhat and how your opinions have shifted. Yeah, yes, please. Um, uh, really, I'm, I'm doing the internet. I'm, I'm, I'm working with the internet since the 90s. I really started very, very early on. And uh, throughout the 2000s, I even earned my money by creating um, Web 2.0 solutions. I was a consultant. And um, back then, actually, for rich internet applications. And... Uh, Beginning of the 2010s, 12s, I uh, went to Swisscom and there I even created together with, uh, I was allowed to, to create uh, together with Swisscom the, the cloud, native cloud of Swisscom itself. So I was a developer advocate for, for Swisscom. And so um, the whole idea of scalability is something that I really know uh, over all these years. So I discovered uh, blockchain somehow around 2013, 14, somewhere there. I liked the concept extremely from day one, but for me, it was clear at this, as the more I, I learned about how it works, it was not a scalable solution. By scale, I mean technical scaling was a really um, having the possibility to be fast on this platform to, to all the to do all the things that that um, people started to discuss um, doing these use cases. And therefore, I wasn't surprised uh, when more and more of these projects became um, going to the behind the firewall, being um, uh, private uh, permission blockchains and so on. And therefore, for me, it was really great to then discover. I discovered the uh, hash graph paper of Lehman very early on, I guess, really summer 16 or so. And I was immediately really blown away as it was, it was perfect. It was something that scaled that were capable of going open and um, also the sharding concept and so on. So this was for me really the moment where I had to say, yes, now it works. This, this is a way to, to go on 
uh, and and I started to focus more on, on, on that. I hope that makes, I, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sharing because I, th I think I think everyone has a very unique story to tell when it comes to how they first discovered DLT, but then also they, that moment when the light bulb turns on and you realize that there is an opportunity for a massive impact for this technology. Uh, now, I'd love to touch on specifically what you're working on. Uh, I don't know, um, uh, we don't need to dive down too much in the weeds, but it would be great for you to share with everyone some of the projects you're involved with. I know in the podcast with Paul Madsen, you discussed more specifically decentralized marketplaces. And I, I, the reason why I, I think that's such a powerful use case for DLT is because the fundamental question that everyone needs to ask is, uh, do you even need a DLT? Do you even need a DLT? And the very brief answer uh, to that question would be, do you require trust amongst multiple parties? And if the answer is no, then uh, I, you'll know the answer better, this, the, uh, better than myself. You don't need a DLT. It, it would overcomplicate things needlessly. You could use a, a server, a database to, to fulfill your operations. But if you do require trust amongst multiple parties, like in a marketplace or these radical markets that I learned, I didn't, I've never heard that term before that podcast, just like it. So you, you educated me when uh, you joined that podcast with Paul Madsen. And so when you when you're in this decentralized marketplace and you do have you do require trust amongst multiple parties, now all of a sudden DLT has has a place, has a belonging all of a sudden. So do you mind sharing a little bit about some of the projects you're working on? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you very much for asking as well uh, again. Um, yes, uh, um, as an independent, I have I, I'm actually working in two two fields. On one side, I'm uh, running my own small uh, garage uh, incubator, and on the other side, I'm I'm also hired as a consultant uh, in by enterprises to to solve uh, bigger problems. And for me, it's really about this trust. As I was very very grateful when the the launch was the 16th of September when this trust layer of the internet was again the, the main theme of the whole thing. Because for me, it's what it is. It's, it's about trust among the same and trust among not the same or, or, or the unsame or, well, it's in German, it works better. But um, <laughs> <laughs> however, what I want to say the same is more trust among the same is more the social thing, right? We know each other but you also have trust mechanisms working. And if you need trust among um, the, the different uh, guys or so, you, until now, all we have is more or less the regulations, the contracts we are, we are working on. And by having a um, uh, technology that is on the public side, um, that gives me the opportunity to fill the gap that the, the, the internet doesn't, is, isn't capable of, of uh, filling in because the internet is a copy machine, right? It's it's not really this unique thing in there. Um, there is a huge chance, a huge opportunity to start increasing um, the value of different transactions by adding trust. Um, so, and I don't really mean trust uh, just on, on, among us people or among the men. Uh, we, we did we. We can do that since 10,000 years, right? We, we um, trained to understand each other, to build up trust when we meet each other. But in the digital world, this trust went away. And so um, we need to figure out new ways how to add this trust. And this is much, has much to do about the hybrid systems. And therefore, for me, I'm really in, in the incubator. We have now I have an identity project in there. We have the, the collectibles marketplace, which is, as you said, it's great to start um, the marketplace ideas, to start discovering, to start experimenting. The collectible space gives me a, a chance to, I think this is about this Ecclesia thing, it's even on the website. So thank you very much for all your uh, advertisement. We still have to deliver, so uh, <laughs> it's not there yet still. But um, uh, it's clear. It's it's this having the possibility to to talk to very um, focused uh, user groups uh, like collectors. Only hundred people maybe in the world that are fancy some particular records of of, of someone or or or, this, or, yeah, or collecting something else, and then start scaling that up as a real marketplace. 
-hmm. and having inside the marketplace um, more trusted transactions, more tr more value, more inform better information, what the price or or the transaction can actually actually be valued. So I believe there you can even go a step further than what we know today by auctions. So auctions are trying to with an auction you try to find the price and so we go on from there so there is much more it's about um we have a DeFi as a decentralized finance platform in there. We have uh, we do something about deep fakes as the authenticity things for journalists to become closer to the truth. Um, we have an uh, I even have a democracy thing also that we try to to increase the quality in voting and and the democracy project. With uh, some enterprises here in Switzerland, we work on um, something around uh, carbon dioxide reduction. Is it as a CO2? Oh, oh, I'm not familiar with that. Wow. No, no, the, the climate thing, carbon dioxide. Oh, ca oh, car oh carbon reduction carbon. in the environment. Yes, carbon. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, if you think about, uh, if you have a, a wallet and there is a cryptocurrency in there. I could also have my trees in there. How many trees did I plant it to reduce the uh, actually getting, mm -hmm. how you said it, you need to say it again. <laughs> Wait, carbon. 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 No, carbon. To carbon to dioxide. Token, 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 uh, tokenization. 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 Tokenization, the tokenization of, of the car carbon. Yeah. <laughs> I'll forget it. Sorry. <laughs> you're good. No, you're good. You're good. You're great, Roland. You're, you're amazing. Exactly. See and then, do, of course, with, with, Swiss, with Swisscom, there is also one or the other big approach. So, wow. Awesome. Wow. Th no, thanks for, thanks for sharing. I, I, like, I, just to further elaborate on, uh, since we're on the subject now, on, on tokenization, recently I gave a presentation at Blockchain Live. It was a conference in uh, London, and the topic of the presentation was tokenization of tangible assets. Uh, and what I'm quickly realizing is that uh, you're, you're talking about a marketplace for collectibles. Yes. And oh. I, I gave a presentation and I talked about uh, uh, power transition, that the, the DAP building on the mainnet, uh, where it's all about creating microgrid marketplaces on, a, on this trust layer of the internet. And then I also spoke about Red Swan, which was uh, talking about creating a marketplace for commercial, uh, commercial real estate investing. The fact that you can chop up bits and pieces of your, let's say 80% of, of your real estate, and you can now access a global marketplace to sell off chunks, bits and pieces, which is actually lowering the barrier of entry uh, of, as, of, to become an investor. And, uh, and it helps the property owners to capture value out of their property, uh, the equity out of their property that otherwise they wouldn't be able to do. So like you were emphasizing just a moment ago, it's all about trust. It's all about trust. And the reason Absolutely. why, the reason why there's so much glut in the system is because of these third party trusted intermediaries, right? So we got banks, you got escrow agents, you've got um, uh, any entities, enterprises, corporations, all kinds of uh, 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 third party trusted intermediaries that just add a lot of glut, add a lot of um, uh, excess waste, uh, if you will, to the system. And each, each intermediary takes time and money. So it adds uh, inefficiencies into the marketplace. It slows things down. It adds redundancies. It, uh, it, it, it uh, uh, creates a bunch of problems uh, in the marketplace that otherwise we would rather not want to deal with. So shifting that trust onto a DLT then further um, uh, increases the efficiency of the overall system. And uh, so that's why I can appreciate what you're working on uh, in your respect, because that's what you've, you've done. You're creating this marketplace in, in, in these other areas. Other and I have to say, uh, it wouldn't been possible without. For me, the hash graph really was was a way to start doing these things because it's exactly what what you guys are doing. The speed, the security, the stability, and then the low transaction cost. So, um, for me, it's really one of the first technologies at all that is really capable of delivering what we need to build the marketplaces on one side, mm -hmm. having business models that could work around that technology, and mm -hmm. at the third place really um, delivers. So, so talking about these business models and use cases, we, we do that since, since a couple of years now in, in the meantime. But, but there are no real projects out there still. So you have to ask why the technology is there. It's easy. It's not capable yet to deliver. 
And uh, I'm very, very glad that since the 16th of September, we really now have uh, this thing out there. And I'm really looking forward. Uh, for me, there is no going back now. Now, uh, Hidero Hashcraft has to lift off. And uh, I, I, I need you guys in, in six months. Uh, if, uh, hey, we need you. <laughs> Hidera, we need it's to a, apps now. There's a, there's a symbiotic relationship here, OK? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of I've heard every transaction we can bring on the on the network will be a step in the right direction. Exactly, exactly. And before we dive into some of the content we want to talk about today, this has already uh, started off in a wonderful direction. Uh, I'd love for you to quickly share about your meetup because I know you have a meetup coming up here. So yes. let's 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 touch on that because if there's anyone in your neck of the woods that would love to learn more, let's make sure they don't miss this chance. Yes, please. So um, it, it will be a meetup at the 4th of October mm -hmm. in, um, in, in the Crypto Valley in Zug. Yes, exactly. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, brought, it up, brought it up here. Yeah, so, of course. Um, yeah. It's, it is, uh, uh, we, we called it really the, 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 the Hidero Hashcraft community meets the Crypto Valley. Um, mm -hmm. It will be at the Wine and Vision event on the Friday evening in the Crypto Valley Labs. So everybody is, is labs, really yeah. invited. Uh, to come and, 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 and to talk about, also to have hard discussions uh, about uh, what we are doing here. The idea for me is a little bit, this should be the starting point to then start doing, let's say every second month, uh, a meetup throughout Switzerland where we start discussing um, use cases. And, and uh, I'm very happy to say that, that in the meantime, also Swisscom, uh, is, is on our side, will we'll join, will help us. So we have the agreement from the Swisscom blockchain guys that they will be around as well. So it's not just for startups or innovators or not just for enterprises. We really want to start building the Swiss community. And this is more or less the first event. It will not be a, a full meetup with uh, two uh, talks or so. It's really just uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, in uh, saying who we are and then we have we have a, a wine together. And yeah. We use it as a starting point. Right on. Wow, that's exciting. That's very exciting. Thanks for sharing. I, I hope you have a great turnout. Uh, I I'm I'm partially uh, not partially. I'm I'm very keen on the whole meetup uh, structure. I I, I was a, a Hedera ambassador for months and months and months uh, before I joined the team, and I hosted monthly meetups in Vancouver, and uh, I. I I really believe in making those connections and shaking hands and meeting people who have problems and, and want to learn more about DLT technology, maybe because they're starting their own business or maybe because they just want to know how their professional future will be impacted by this technology. Uh, it's, it's an important uh, to way to connect with people and, and understand that this is real. This, the, everything we're discussing is, is real. It's not fictitious. It's not theory. This is uh, this stuff is happening. These changes are happening and it's, uh, it's important to, uh, to, to stay on top of a lot of this stuff. It's, it's not always the easiest content to understand, right? So I think it makes a difference when someone can show up into a room, ask questions, get them answered right then and there. And we are we could not be more proud of the ambassadors uh, with Hedera because uh, there, there's many, many ambassadors spread out across the globe, I think in 80 plus cities. Uh, I, I don't have the exact number, but uh, we, we have communities all over the place. And, uh, and it, it's, it's so inspiring to see so many people get fired up over this, this information, right? So, so thanks for hosting the meetup. Uh, I, if I was in, in your neck of the woods, I would, uh, would glad to, uh, be happy to join this. So unfortunately I'm too far away, but I will, uh, I, maybe one day I can get my butt to Switzerland. Exactly. I've, I've never been to Switzerland I'm, and it's on my list. It's on my list, Roland. So might be, uh, no might be, might be something. I'll have to drop you a line when I get to your neck of the woods, and then we'll. Have You're to always invited, absolutely. Thank and that's you, why we were asking to 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 just talk about Switzerland in the in the Hidera meetup, and not not Zurich or so, because we really want to be all over the place. We will be in Zurich, in Bern, in Basel, and maybe even oh, wow. in Lausanne. So the, the idea would be that we that we do it in several several places, not just wow. one. And I organized that we have an, uh, something like a home base where we are coming from, but this is uh, another thing. And so, so we hope, I hope we can, we can really uh, I would, the whole thing. I would so enjoy getting to uh, meet up with you. So moving on here, we are going to address the gorilla in the room. 
Uh, and uh, we're having a little little uh, fun with this image here. I love this image, actually. I think it's hilarious. Uh, first things first, we uh, Hedera wants to offer a massive thank you to the community for all the feedback uh, over the recent uh, couple of weeks now, I suppose, uh, regarding the um, the uh, token distribution model. Uh, the company has been collecting all kinds of amazing ideas and suggestions. Uh, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, this is what our technology represents. Everyone has a voice, everyone comes together, everyone's part of the conversation. So we wanna thank the, the community for all their feedback. Uh, the, the team is listening. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that most people who are watching this or, or uh, uh, maybe some aren't aware yet that our CEO, Mance Harmon, uh, produced a blog and uh, wanted to, and all of these links uh, I will be including in the description after the live stream. I'll go back into the description and I'm gonna add all these links into the description so that everyone has easy access to all the information that we're gonna be discussing today. But uh, the first one here I'm gonna highlight is this blog, the most recent blog added to the Hedera.com website where uh, Mance actually um, uh, goes through, and I'm going to go there now, where Mance actually goes through the, uh, here we go. Let me find it for everybody. There we go, here it is. Uh, so Hedera Network Performance and Token Economics, uh, as you can see, he published this on September 24th. So this was only one week, one week after open access. And we, we were able to share some of the metrics uh, that we, this is years of work that have uh, come to fruition. And uh, the team was very excited to share some of this. Over 2.2 million transactions conducted on the network during the past week. It's, uh, uh, so you're gonna see some of the numbers right here. Um, uh, it, Mance does highlight uh, some numbers and dates around the SAF distribution because we were receiving some questions and the community wanted some clarity on this. Uh, removing undistributed community earned token program, excuse me, program tokens from the circulating supply discusses the circulating, circulating dis supply and then reevaluating Hedera's token economics model. So uh, he talks about here that we are working with, we hired uh, a group called Prism Group. He, this is a group of professionals that we are um, uh, consulting with to, um, to basically discuss anything and all things. Everything is on the table. And uh, Mance highlights the reason uh, for that. But what we would like to um, uh, uh, highlight or discuss or share with the community here is that uh, we certainly don't want to make any knee-jerk reactions. Nothing will change overnight. Um, we're talking about uh, 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 possibly making some big changes, and uh, and uh, that that needs to take that needs to take the appropriate time and attention that it deserves. So uh, we won't be making any changes overnight, but um, uh, we will. Uh, this this blog is in an effort to be completely transparent and um, and uh, honest and open with the community, uh, so that the community can see that uh, the uh, the team has has heard the, the feedback and that we are doing something about it. So uh, yeah, just wanted to highlight this, this blog for everybody. I certainly don't want to um, speak uh, uh, in, in too much detail because Mance, Mance is far more capable to explain things and you can check out his blog uh, for yourself here. Okay, so, and we'll make these links available for everybody as soon as the stream is over, I'll add it to the description. Okay, so moving on here, uh, so the block. Uh, uh, pushed out this article recently. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce says digital assets could one day be the money of the internet. So I wanted to start off with this one here because uh, as far as industry news, go, news goes, because I saw this streaming last week and I apologize, I can't even remember, I can't even recall where it was streaming. I gotta have to go um, uh, locate where that was because I haven't had time to watch the whole thing, but I do wanna get back there and, and watch the whole thing. But Pierce states that she views digital assets as transaction mechanisms, and that she believes store of value is an important function of these assets. Store of value, I think, is a really important function. I do think that we'll see as technology changes that they become much more uh, the money of the internet, Pierce said. So it's really important to um, uh, uh, listen to what the SEC's views and uh, uh, public um, present, uh, public, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, public, uh, 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 statements are around DLT and crypto economics as a whole, uh, because uh, this this will certainly affect any DLT project or uh, cryptocurrency moving forward. So, uh, uh, one of uh, one of uh, 
our biggest um, headaches to date has always been the lack of regulatory clarity. And so uh, it seems that it, with each passing day, we are getting closer and closer to that regulatory clarity that we're all so desperate for so that uh, everyone can make better decisions moving forward, individuals and enterprises alike. So this is uh, super important to pay attention to, to news like this. Okay, um, moving on. And, uh, and uh, Roland, feel free to jump in if you ever have something that you wanna uh, discuss or, or share some thoughts. Um, wanted to highlight this one as well, um, where we had Fundstrat's uh, Tom Lee was on uh, this uh, on the move uh, with Yahoo Finance. He was in this uh, interview. This popped up last week, and uh, Tom Lee is a, uh, a very uh, influential figure in uh, the the investment world. So we thought we'd share this as well. Moving on, um, we got a Forbes article here: U.S. House passes bill requiring study of blockchain technology. So now. Here we are at uh, approaching the end of 2019, and we're seeing a lot more interest in this technology. Uh, a lot more government and regulatory uh, institutions are starting to recognize the value, and FinCEN being one of them. Uh, the thing that I wanted to highlight down here, uh, Representative Patrick McHenry, the House Financial Services Committee ranking member, during the debate of the House floor noted, this legislation takes the first step to revolutionize the way law enforcement works to locate and stop criminal activity in the financial services industry, including potential terrorist threats using artificial intelligence, blockchain, and other emerging technologies. This is a FinCEN bill. This is a technology bill. It drives them to utilize the most advanced computing and the most advanced technology anywhere in the world and the best practices when it comes to the data analysis and use. I mean, not too long ago, Roland and I were talking about trust. And I think this is, it always boils down to trust. And uh, uh, we're now seeing these, these bills um, being proposed all with regulators all around the world um, because it's, it's financial security, it's, it's terrorism, it's, it's addressing all kinds of things, right? So maybe I can, I can say here's something, uh, what's happening uh, overseas in, in Switzerland right now. Um, of course, I cannot comment much about uh, what's happening in the U.S. at the moment uh, because I'm, I'm too far away. But um, on one side, it's very, uh, very good to see that, that also there um, the things are moving. Uh, over here, Switzerland is extremely open. As I saw, the regulator is, is really uh, embraced the technology from the beginning. And um, there was even a voting, um, I think, half a year ago that they don't want to just make a blockchain law or something like that, but, but really to just include the new technologies in existing law. As I saw, the, the whole idea is to, uh, that they, they understood that it's not something, just something new and we need to do everything different, but that, that you just need to adjust slightly uh, and to embrace new technologies to, to go in and, 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 and go from there further. So we will even have, if I'm right, tomorrow will be the go live of the first crypto bank in, in Switzerland, the official one oh, wow. with, uh, with banking licenses and everything. So it's really, um, everything is, is going in this direction that we can, can, can use the technology to create um, these platforms that we need to. And of course, uh, stability is, is the most important thing we need to create businesses. And so therefore, uh, for us, it's important to, to have clear regulations what to do. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it looks like every passing day, like I was saying, we're getting closer and closer to that regulatory clarity. I, I think you just touched on something important. The regulators around the world are sensitive to the fact that they don't want to overregulate, stifle innovation. Uh, they 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 don't want to drive technology away from their their citizens, their 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 territories. But uh, they certainly re realize that there's got to be some level of regulation in place to help protect their their constituents, their their citizens, their populations. So so there's got to be that healthy balance, and that's what we're in the middle of right now. Uh, so we have a Forbes article here, uh, Hedera Hashgraph Explored, and I thought they did a, a really great job on this article. And I want to scroll down here because this actually ties into uh, what Roland just pointed out. Where did it go? I lost it. The tie. I love this one, I think. 
I yeah, this, like yesterday. Yeah, you read this one? Yeah, this is, uh, where did it go? I was going to, or maybe it's the next one. Yeah, I can't it see it now. Something like in a conclusion where he was really cool. Is it that one? Was it the conclusion? Governed by industry giants. Um, I wanted or maybe to make it was another one. Um, I wanted to make note. Maybe this. Maybe this is the one I was thinking of. This. This was a. Maybe this is the one that's the over. There was. There's been a lot of content published about Hedera recently, and it's been really difficult keeping up with it all. <laughs> it's. It's been hard. It's been a, a battle. It's a good. It's a good problem to have. But uh, uh, so this might be the the overview that I'm I'm thinking of. But then this crypto morrow article. Uh, Hedera Hashgraph, a review. Maybe this is the one that I was actually thinking about that I wanted because you just said something that that there. It is. That's the point that I was looking for. Okay, my apologies. I'm confusing my articles here. There's so much. Uh, so, so you just po pointed out that enterprises need stability, and we can't. We haven't even touched on this on on, on today's call, but down here, network-based consensus mechanism. So they actually highlighted the the point here that there is a no fork guarantee for the network and its cryptocurrency. This means it has an inherent level of stability for app development that should encourage users to take more of a long-term commitment to the network. And I wanted to highlight this because this was also discussed at Blockchain Live recently in London. And I, I, uh, I touched on it in my presentation and I've, I also heard other presenters uh, touching on this as well, because back in the day, in the early days, forking was a, a powerful tool for the community to overcome certain problems and hurdles and 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 um, expand their their capabilities but in over the last couple of years what we've witnessed is a fork will actually create a lot of chaos and instability in the marketplace and what roland what you just highlighted was that you, you in business you need a certain amount of stability don't you and you and i not too long ago we were discussing about tokenization of tangible assets and creating different marketplaces so let's let's tie the two of them together because if you were to uh, register uh, any kind of tangible asset, whether it's a collectible or electricity or trees, you were talking about trees, or and then and then you and then the pro the uh, sorry the the network were, was to experience a fork into a competing platform with a competing cryptocurrency. Well, now what happens? Because let's take real estate as an example. After the fork, I decided to sell that real estate. So that real estate sell transaction was then recorded on one of those platforms that was forked. The other platform still shows that I, I own that, that property. So you can understand how this, is, this will quickly spiral out of control when it comes to tangible, uh, tangible uh, assets of, uh, and tokenization. So this is, uh, this is when Hedera Hashgraph hit the scene. It caused a lot of controversy because we very quickly made the promise of the no fork guarantee and, uh, and there are certain uh, networks and circles that are very opposed to that perspective because uh, they view forking as, as an asset. And uh, there may be a time when that was the case, but unfortunately now what we're seeing is these different use cases and Roland is one of them where uh, the use case now uh, supersedes the, the, um, uh, the capabilities of traditional blockchain technology. Uh, traditional blockchain technology, we talked about uh, TPS, transactions per second. We've talked about throughput. Uh, we've talked about governance. It, it just simply exceeds the capabilities of traditional um, uh, DLT models. And so there's very specific reasons why Hedera Hashgraph has made these decisions. There's been a ton of thought that has gone into everything over years and years and years of work uh, so that enterprises and developers will finally, for the first time, have an option to uh, build on a, uh, on a network that promises not to fork. So I thought uh, I thought that was something to highlight, and I uh, I confused my articles there. I thought it was in the other in the Forbes article, but it was in this one. So, but they're both great articles. Highly recommend everybody to check those out. There is another Forbes uh, Forbes uh, articles I thought yesterday I saw that um, highlights the same thing in in their very own way. This the stability that the governance the the, the council can provide um, is really huge. Also, this is. To, for me, this has a lot to do with the whole decentralization story, how, how Hidera is set up. So having these 100% these, um, uh, consensus in seconds um, actually guarded by 
by a, a, a council we can trust. These things are very, very, very important. And, that, um, uh, that's that's interesting. That's interesting that you just said that. Actually, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted. I went back to the went back to the Forbes article because uh, please weigh in on this. I'd, I'd love your opinion on this because Forbes actually says here one point of criticism is that the lack of true decentralization at the benefits of scalability and security. What I've noticed is that if you go into a room for a, full of a hundred people, they're going to have a hundred different definitions of risk. Everyone has a different definition of risk. And I'm starting to realize that that's the same thing when it comes to decentralization, because you just pointed out how decentralized we are. But the, the author of this article is claiming that Hedera Hashgraph is not decentralized. What are, you, what are your thoughts uh, around that? It's exactly this article, even if I didn't found uh, what I was looking for when you were scrolling down. It's exactly that. Um, this is this is really it puzzles me because as I don't I think I, I know why he comes to this conclusion. Somewhere in the text is something that um, Vitaly had say, was talking about this 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 three this this three levels where you have to make your trade offs. And uh, they discuss here that the trade-off is that the, hash the, block, the blockchain trilemma. I think that's yeah, this, the, this trilemma, trilemma thing, right? And uh, so th there is this theory or this idea that that the hash graph had to make um, a trade-off on the decentralization to get to the speed. And the third one was it's somewhere in there. Scalability and security. And scalability, yes, exactly. And so, um, in my opinion, this is not not true. It's it's just wrong. Um, it, it's we pushing here the boundaries. It's much more like uh, when you will go into the innovation things. When you look at the blue ocean idea, it's not that we make a trade off here. Uh, Hashgraph is decentralized heavily. Even it's not even the nodes. It's uh, the whole. Um, a uh, consensus algorithm is divided by the 50 billion tokens out there, and every node is has an, uh, a limit how much how much token can be can be um, proxied from there. So, and on the other side, if you have 39 blue chips uh, in the first place, we even wanna wanna grow, and, and we are already planning how we can uh, run our own full nodes in, in that whole whole thing. Um, no, sorry, if I have three, four, five miners that already make up one third of a network as we have it today, I don't see why you could have, why you call this is more decentralized. So um, Hedera is decentralized on several layers in a very intelligent way that, that needs to play together now. And that's why I'm, I'm welcoming that, that they look over the whole uh, token um, economics again. But I think there will, they will not find too much to change. We really have to, to bring the, 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 the network to the next layer now. And here, if you do, there was a conclusion in it at the very bottom when mm -hmm. this journalist said exactly that, um, that it maybe isn't that much of a bad trade-off if you know 39 uh, blue chips that bringing you that instead of having, yeah, here, it's it maybe this is even a better choice than having non KYC miners in dubious parts of the world validating transactions. So, um, for me, I see decentralization everywhere here. It's a uh, fair so fairness is underestimated. As I, in my opinion, the, the beauty of this trust layer is this fairness that is in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's valuable, valuable uh, comment uh, comments there. Thank you, Roland. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your your insights there. Okay, uh, so moving on here, we also have a Yahoo Finance article, Hashing Systems launches Composer Chrome extension for Hedera Hashgraph. So uh, the CEO, Pablo Pallard, I hope I'm saying his last name correctly, says, we are motivated by the fact that we are providing something the community has not seen before, an intuitive system of tools that allow anyone with front-end development experience to work on Hedera. Now, I've said this before many times, I'm not a developer, and I'm sure the value that uh, Composer on, on Chrome, the Chrome extension uh, uh, Composer will bring developers goes far above my head. <laughs> I, I wish I uh, had a better understanding of what uh, Hashing Systems is doing here, but they're clearly meeting a need for developers. And moving Moving on here, I cannot do Forkless Cafe without talking about Lehman Baird, Dr. Lehman Baird's keynote presentation at Upbit Developer Conference. 
this was this was just posted on September 23rd, but it happened on September 4th. I remember posting about it on social, and uh, they did a wonderful job. They did what I, I highly recommend everyone check this video out. I'm shocked with the low views. It looks like they have a newer YouTube channel here, only 164 subscribers, so that might be part of the reason why. But this uh, this presentation was fantastic. It was very well done. Multiple angles of cameras and. Uh, the presentation uh, that Dr. Lehman Baird gave was amazing. I um, I really appreciated uh, the points that he the highlight. He's a natural teacher. We've all said this. He is a natural teacher. He has this innate ability to break incredibly complex situations and technology into uh, simple language that anyone can understand. Uh, I've been lucky enough to to meet him in real life and to see presentations of his in real life. And I, I wish I could have been into this one. This, uh, this event seemed like a, a wonderful event. So uh, highly, highly recommend anyone who's watching this live stream, go check out this, this half hour presentation from Dr. Lehman Baird. You will, um, you will get a lot of value out of this one. Uh, moving on, we got uh, Dr. Lehman Baird again here. Um, Alex Saunders is a popular YouTuber and uh, his YouTube channel is Nuggets News. Uh, he's actually interviewed uh, Hedera team members in the past and with all the, the buzz recently around open access, uh, he reached out to us and wanted to uh, uh, get Dr. Lehman Baird on, on the show. And they did, they did a, great, a, a great interview here. Another one that I, I highly recommend anyone to check out. Um, I, I, think, I think Alex here does some really great content. Uh, he does, he's, he's very active in, in the communities from Australia and uh, the, you can't go wrong with his content. He does a, a great job. Uh, so I, I highly recommend people to go check out this interview too. Um, this one. Oh, so Dustin does a podcast called, uh, it's a life, uh, life's tough, but so-and-so is tougher. And so he interviewed Dr. Lehman Baird back on Monday, May 27th. So the, the content here might be, but might be somewhat dated, but uh, it's, again, a great interview. Highly recommend you check this one out. Obviously, uh, Dustin here just recently created his YouTube channel and then added the podcast to his YouTube channel. But um, go check it out. There's a, it's a really great conversation. He, um, he actually gets, um, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, tip of my tongue. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Uh, Sharon, what, uh, uh, Jim Nasser. Never mind. Jim Nasser. Jim Nasser from Satara is uh, actually brought into the interview as well. And uh, wow, I can't believe I forgot his name there. And uh, I, I think I have a chance of meeting Jim this week, actually. So I'm really excited. Uh, he's going to be here in the London area at, at an event with um, Christian Hasker, our chief marketing officer. So I'm looking forward to the chance to uh, to meet Jim Nasser because he's doing some really incredible things in the uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs um, uh, uh, supply chain management space. And moving on, we have a blank screen. <laughs> Why is this showing a blank screen? Here we go. We have, this is a YouTube channel. Oh, this thing is not booting up for me here. Um, so this is a YouTube channel that I'd never heard of before called Bitcoin for Begin Beginners. And they did a, a, a brief overview of Hedera Hashgraph. And I thought he did a fantastic job. And I don't know why you can see the thumbnail down here, but it's not showing up. Okay, my apologies, it's not working. But um, uh, uh, we're gonna include all these links again for everybody in the description below. So don't panic, you'll be able to find links to all of these. And these, uh, this was a fantastic overview of, of Hedera Hashgraph, I felt. So I wanted to share it with everybody watching the live stream. And Moving on, we have a social sizzler here. Uh, so I had to touch on this. Uh, this this tweet performed really well on our on our Twitter account, and also I was very fortunate and lucky. This past Wednesday, I mentioned that I was uh, at a blockchain live um, event in London, and later on that night, uh, found myself at a dinner with um, various DApps building on Hedera Hashgraph, including Adstax. And had a wonderful conversation with these guys. I, uh, I, I, I've noticed that uh, the online digital marketing space, when it comes to ads, digital ads, it's a uh, it's big business, big business. But unfortunately, um, we are in uh, uh, a new day where we have these things called bots, where bots are sometimes clicking on these ads, and then the ads that you're paying for you're not exactly getting what you think you're getting because uh, the metrics are showing that you got a click, but that click 
was actually produced by a bot and not by a person. So once again, it comes down to trust. It always boils down to trust. It doesn't matter what we talk about. It always comes down to trust. And what AdStacks is doing, they're doing, they, their transaction volume is, is crazy high. Uh, they, were, they were sharing some numbers with me and, and I've, I've shared some numbers online, obviously. And uh, they, uh, they're, they're, um, they're, what am I trying to say here? Their needs uh, far exceed uh, that uh, of which a, a, a regular traditional DLT platform would be able to provide. Uh, their, their transaction volume is just so far, so far exceeds it. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of transactions in a month and scaling up from there. And uh, so this is, this is a, a project to keep a close eye on. I believe they're going to be doing some really great things, uh, especially for anyone, any marketing, advertising firm, any, any, any digital professional who is in the business of buying online ads, marketing ads, and wanting to know that those clicks are real. And so, um, so that's, that's something that I wanted to highlight for everybody because AdStax is doing some really very, very cool things. And, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly gonna be keeping a close eye on them as well. So, all right. So let's get back to the, the presentation here. Uh, excited to, to get to, here's the, the links that we went through and our favorite part of the Forklist Cafe is the hero of the week. We would like to congratulate Supreme Max 67. Woohoo, um, Supreme Max, woohoo. <laughs> don't know. Great choice. A great, yeah, great you think so? Course. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm, of course, uh, I'm, I'm reading this court on a daily basis, and Supreme Max 67 is doing a great job there. So, congratulations. Uh, so we don't know if you're watching Supreme Max 67, uh, if you're watching the live stream or watching the recording, but uh, please make sure you reach out to me on uh, on Telegram or where or Discord or wherever uh, you can find me, or I'll reach out to you. And uh, happy, happy, and pleased to share a small gesture, a small gratitude uh, from us to you uh, for all your support. You are extremely active in Discord, extremely active in YouTube comments. Uh, helping educate the marketplace, and uh, uh, we we operate in a in a funny world sometimes with misinformation or outdated information. And uh, Supreme Max sixty seven is certainly certainly an example. Uh, probably deserved a being hero of the week way earlier than today. So that's that's my bad. You can blame me for that one. There's so many people. There's so many people that deserve hero of the week that sometimes it's really difficult to choose. And uh, this is another one of those examples where uh, Supreme Max 67 just brings all kinds of value. Uh, some of you may recognize that uh, he was the co-host with uh, Gossip Guys uh, live stream uh, and uh, uh, look forward to seeing more, um, uh, more shows from Gossip Guy in the future and hopefully Supreme Max 67 will be able to join him. But uh, just a small gesture, our thanks to you, letting you know that we, uh, we recognize the value that, bring you, the, that you bring the community. So thank you. And uh, tying things up here now, get ready to wrap things up. We want to remind everyone to check out the uh, Gossip About Gossip podcast. Uh, we have a separate playlist for the podcast on our YouTube channel. The link is there and I will be included in the description down below. Uh, there's tons of content. Uh, Roland was a guest, as we already mentioned. Uh, uh, Paul Madsen is our technical lead uh, uh, with Hedera Hashgraph and uh, gives wonderful presentations or interviews, I should say, with with other uh, thought leaders in the space. Uh, Roland, loved your, your podcast with, with Paul. You did a great job. Thank you so much again for joining us on the podcast and here on Forklist Cafe. And for those of you who haven't uh, uh, filled in the survey about the Gossip About Gossip podcast, we, we, uh, we would be so grateful if you uh, add, added your two tiny bars into the survey because we want to make that podcast better for all of you. We want this content to, to answer those, those questions that you have. And the, the only way we're going to make better content is if we get, can get some feedback, some real feedback. And so if you haven't filled in, in the survey already, I'm going to include the link in the description below for you as well. Please, it'll take two minutes, take two minutes out of your day. It's not a very big survey, but uh, it'll certainly help us um, bring a lot more value to, to all of you. 
So thank you, everybody. I'm not sure if uh, Sharon has any comments or questions yeah, uh, in the live we got chat. Some questions. All some right. Questions from the Sweet. audience. So maybe this is one that both of you can help with. It's really related to building or creating a node on the network. So um, basically, I suppose my question is what coding experience will be needed to build a node in the future? So maybe you can both uh, maybe talk a little bit about you know your experience roland and then also in the future what what people would need to do to be able to build uh, on the network um i have to say this this question comes a little bit too early um we don't really have um the code yet what it means i also never until today i didn't saw any requirements what it really means to to run a node what we have what what, what i know about i'm just the ambassador right so this uh, is also my opinions are my own so uh, all i see in there is uh, we have the mirror node code now to start looking at it to to figure out how to use it and the mirror node node is is, is very very important important for our um different use cases and, and business models we, we want to put up there um, for me at the moment the node is um as Lehman bart put it in one of the three um uh, three uh, videos he did when he said that there will be several um uh, a roadmap uh, first the 39 uh, of the council members will will have then also will create nodes they are uh, obliged to to run a node more or less and then um, there will be a second round and we are preparing to be uh, capable then of, of being this in this second round uh, being smaller having smaller companies but but also starting to to run a node and so i have to say i mean it's it's hard to say. For me, it's more about what does it cost me in a in a business model to to run a node, and there you need to know that I'm I'm an IT guy, so maybe something is what is cheap and what is expensive. I I'm perfectly. I know platforms that cost between twenty and fifty k a month to run them, so um, I'm not that. Uh, uh, there, I need to phrase it differently. I'm, I'm very grateful and happy that there is this sharding concept in there. So I will be, I believe that there will be different nodes or different ways running a node, which uh, burden you take on yourself by running a node and so on. And the beauty of the whole system for me is that you can even push uh, the, the, the value of the trust by, by having your own nodes in the whole system that you can communicate directly with. So for me, it's, it's, uh, it's too early because there is not enough information yet around, but um, it's, I'm looking really, really much forward to, to, um, to start doing it. On a tech side, I have to say, I don't believe this is more complex than running other containers. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. There is only one copace. We talked about it. It's not forked. It's not, we're not forking. The government, the, the governing council, will take care that that the, the software is maintained. And therefore, for me, it's it's also I, I would even put push the, the ball a little bit back. I would expect them from Hidera that they support us, helping us how to to run nodes, give us all the information, and so on. Mm -hmm. And programming the hash graph as a creating these platforms is much more compelling than um, than running a node that's mm -hmm. my guess i yeah no re really well said and the only thing i can really add to that is the the fact that uh, hedera hashgraph has been very very open and vocal about the fact that our goal is to get to millions of nodes that's our goal to to achieve true true decentralization but you have to scale up uh, in a methodical way uh, and anonymous nodes won't be available until the governing council deems that it's safe to do so. It's got to be safe. It's got to be. Uh, there, that's that's the the key point. And uh, we we um, itemized a lot of these details in the recent HBAR economics paper that was uh, published. Uh, so let me add that link in the description down below as well, uh, to because that further itemizes how how important it is uh, to keep a close eye on how to scale things up. You got to bootstrap the system, as they say. Uh, you just can't throw everything out there uh, because then uh, the the system would be open to uh, certain 
uh, attacks. Uh, cyber cybersecurity is a very real thing in the real in the current world that we live in, and uh, you have to scale up in a methodical way. But um, but the, that's the the idea. And eventually, uh, my understanding is that Adara Hasgraf will be providing some educational content around that uh, so that absolutely anybody can have a note uh, where it could be something like like your cell, something the size of your cell phone that you would uh, hook up to the broadband at home and then you would help the network achieve consensus. I maybe need to add uh, because I had, I, I've said now such high figures. Uh, if you are talking about millions of nodes, then it has to be something that can be run cheap. Also this, this, this is what I mean. It's, it's really, I believe that the, the whole sharding thing will, that's why I believe in this whole story that it will be possible. There will be different nodes uh, having, having different requirements and different Correct. jobs. In the whole. Cor correct. The idea is to scale up to millions of transactions per second while using sharding. Uh, sharding will be a part of that for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Good stuff. That's why. Yeah. So, um, I'm not afraid about that. I'm looking forward to start using it. That's the, yeah. that's what I want. Would like to say to them. <laughs> good to hear. Good to hear. What else we got, Sharon? Well, that's good. I think that's most uh, the most critical one, and I think we're good for the rest. Thank you Fantastic. both. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you, Roland. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it it it's important for us to have community representation here on Forkless Cafe, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, a million thank yous for joining us. Uh, it, uh, I'm sure you're a busy guy, and uh, and uh, we really appreciate your your insights and your thoughts and sharing with everyone here. It's just uh, always it's always great to get to know the community members, and I look forward to getting my butt to Switzerland so I can uh, join a, a meet up with you one day. Thank you very much from my side, and and I really I hoped I did know my share. I would call out to everybody else now. Come close. Do, do the same thing, please. They just started to asking me. It started six weeks ago or something that I that I was asked to be here and there and and and, and all these on all these channels. It's it's a huge pleasure and 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 a great great honor and great opportunity. But indeed, I need to go back to the code, <laughs> to the platforms, to the businesses, and uh, really start to delivering what I'm always talking about. It that's my goal. <laughs> How to go. <laughs> Thank you. Fair, fair, fair enough. I promise I won't bother you again, <laughs> at least for two weeks. Give me <laughs> but, but, and Roland, Roland beat me to the punch there. If, if you liked the video, smash that like button. And if you like these live streams, these weekly live streams, let us know. Ask some questions in the comments. Leave, leave some questions for us. Let us know that you're, uh, you're enjoying these weekly live streams and we'll continue making them for everybody because we want to make the best content that's going to. Uh, uh, address the, the the problems and, and concerns that all, all of you have. But uh, but uh, uh, as always, thank you for joining us. Uh, hope to see you next week. And uh, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Thanks. <laughs>